Hello again and welcome once again to another edition of the Catholic View for Women, where, of course, we always discuss all the issues out there from a truly Catholic perspective. I'm Teresa Tamio. I co-host this program. I also host the daily EWTN radio program, Catholic Connection. And as always, joined by my wonderful co-host, Astrid Bennett Gutierrez from Hispanics for Life and Janet Morana from Silent No More and Priests for Life. And boy, this is going to be an interesting show because we are going to be talking about the guys. The guys. I know this we're is Catholic View for Women, <laughs> but we're right, talking but, about, yeah, we're gonna let's talk about hear the guys. it for we're the guys. Nice. And right. I think this is really important for women to hear from men who are struggling with the same issues that many of our single women are struggling with. All of us really are right. called to live chastely. But we always hear when we go out on speaking events and you being in the pro-life mm -hmm. movement, you being in the pro-life movement, but we all do a lot on the, the teaching of chastity. And we often hear from women of all ages how difficult it is to be a Catholic woman mm -hmm. in the world trying to live out your faith and to be holy and to be chaste as we're all called to be chaste. But it's also a challenge for the guys because we, we also, are start, I hear from a lot of, of men who listen to my radio show who say, you know, I'm trying to be a good Catholic guy, but I go out and I date a woman mm -hmm. and I'm trying to be respectful and she thinks there's something wrong with me if I don't encourage sexual activity like right. now they're saying even on the first date. So that's, right. that's why we wanted to explore this topic from their perspective. Well, sure. And, you know, I can remember growing up uh, in the 50s and 60s, you know, uh, women, it was the focus was the young girls. You know, you're not supposed to kiss a guy in and don't do this, don't do that. But what about the guys? You know, there was a cultural thing back then. There was girls shouldn't do anything, but the guys could, you know, all, you know that old expression, go sow your oats, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Men used to say that. Yes. I used to say, sow those oats with who? You? Someone else's daughter, you know. So I think, but nowadays, I, I think the men are really struggling just as much as the women are to yes. live a chaste life because the expectations and the culture, it's so over-sexualizing everybody, not just mm -hmm. the w women, but the men. And the expectation is on the first date, off to the bedroom they go. I mean, it's like become very popular. You know? In the Hispanic community, too, we have those double standards, too. We see the machismo, where cer certain things are expected from the woman to be a certain way, and the men are supposed to go and sow the wild oats, too. But, you know, now we have so many families striving for for holiness, for a better way. A lot of men that are striving, and sometimes I think the men and the women have to realize that there are other men, other women that are also striving, and just uh, really to, to pray to God, trust that there are people, and I think if you set your standards high, you'll find those people that also have those high standards. God will lead you to them. But um, I think we have to talk about this because we have to understand that guys are also mm -hmm. struggling to find someone like-minded as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of that, you know, I was in Rome not too long ago, and uh, we have a, a member of our Priest for Life uh, family, uh, Joffrey Strickland. Uh, he's our Rome office uh, associate, and uh, he's a canon lawyer, believe it or not, and uh, he's, he's so brilliant. He speaks like seven languages. Seven wow. languages. Seven languages. <laughs> I mean, he's studying now. He's trying to perfect his Arabic. I said, Jaffe, why are you doing <laughs> that? He says, oh, well, you know, the, the evangelization out in the yes. Middle East is going to be very important for yes. Catholics. I have to be able to know Arabic. I said, oh, my goodness. You know, he's amazing. He's a wonderful young man living a chaste life. And uh, recently I said, okay, Joffrey, I want to hear firsthand. <laughs> Tell me about those struggles. So uh, let's see what Joffrey had to say about from the guy's point of view. I think one of the... I guess I would say misconceptions out there is that, you know, that there, that sure there are girls out there who are committed to chase lives, that are committed to daily prayer, and who, you know, are really uh, waiting for a good guy to be out there. That that really, you know, people argue well, there aren't any good guys out there. There aren't any guys that are committed to chastity or to daily prayer, etc., and and waiting to marriage and. And, and, and I would argue that there are good men out there. Um, and I would also argue that just as there's you know, women who have had difficult stories of trying to find a good guy and being pressured and put into difficult situations in terms of uh, being tempted to compromise their, their beliefs or their values or to wait until marriage, there, there have been guys that have been put in that very same situation as well. And um, I know personally I've had situations where uh, – you, you ask a, a you know what seems to be a very you know good and, and, and grounded girl out good woman out and and you you've gone out and and all of a sudden you know maybe if not the third date second date and who knows even the first date you you do feel pressured to 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 
go beyond that which you've committed uh, you know, not to do. Uh, I can recount several instances where um, I've gone out with a, a good young woman, maybe she went to church, maybe she did this or that, and then all of a sudden, maybe we went and got some dinner, and we watched a movie, and then, you know, <laughs> it was very clear what the expectation was, and I remember one time in particular, I was asked, you know, like, okay, what's next, and I said, well, we're going to pray the rosary, <laughs> and and then uh, the, her eyes got uh, very, very big, and kind of looked down, and then she was like, yeah. So we prayed the entire rosary, and uh, and and then we talked a little bit about it, and and about what happened, and then, and then we went on, and we actually, it didn't work out between us ultimately, but we, we became good friends. Uh, and another instance uh, I can recount um, was actually similar to that. Uh, it was a situation where um, I was <laughs> studying abroad uh, and uh, at a university uh, outside the United States, and and again, I, I, what I thought was a, you know just someone who was committed to you know at least a you know a, a somewhat chaste life. Uh, we went out, and you know it was clear that something else was expected, and. Uh, and and I just I remember saying a prayer in my heart. I was like, Lord, help me just really genuinely help this woman. Help me genuinely, you know, what can I say or do or say that's really gonna uh, be a witness to her and help her open her heart to you. And, and I was just like, I remember I told her. I said, you know, listen, you are a beautiful woman. There's no doubt about that. But because you're so beautiful. And because you have a beauty that's so much greater than what anyone else will ever tell you, the culture will tell you, I don't want to do that with you because you, you have more dignity than that. And you need to know that. And I remember I told her that, and again, shocked. And, uh, and then we wound up having about an hour-long conversation where she recounted to me all the different struggles she had had and the different issues that she was going through with her family and these different things. And... And it was really a powerful moment in our life, and and I think we even we even prayed together, and uh, and then again, you know, we became friends, and it wasn't anything, but it, it's also, you know, it was an opportunity, I I hope for her, you know, to to see a little bit of Christ in me, and then in the moment, and then you know, what more can you really ask for? And then you just move forward in trust and hope and prayer, and you know, I know that God has the best in mind. I know. <laughs> that just really got me all choked up when he was talking about, you know, you are beautiful. There's no doubt you're beautiful, but you're right. so beautiful that I want to treat you with that kind, with of, that kind of respect, respect and, dignity. and yeah. dignity. Yes, and he also got into an important point, which is one of the instances the young lady recounted, like, the struggles she had. And maybe what she was really looking for was true friendship and, and love, even if it was not real love but something right. where she felt love and so it was beautiful that he could minister her to her in that in that moment and uh, that's what I really think a lot of people are looking for that maybe are leading unchaste lives is they really are wounded they're looking for love mm -hmm. even if it's just something artificial mm -hmm. well, How much you, oh go ahead Jean, no I'm sorry. just saying that well whoever does uh, Joff, date Joffrey they're gonna get a real gem <laughs> certainly and of course he's still over in Rome you know, he, I mean, like we said, seven languages, canon lawyer, uh, he works for Priests for Life. He also uh, assists the Pontifical Council for the Family with a lot of duties. And uh, with the World Meeting of Families, he's been very involved with that. And he'll be stateside for the World Meeting of Families. Imagine and, the pressure. Uh, you know, yeah. Even worse over in Europe, mm -hmm. where the culture is already, is, 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 I mean, it's bad here in the right. States, but over in Europe, it's, it's much worse. Mm -hmm. But I was going to ask you, with your work with young people that you've done, don't you think that, that some of them are automatically thinking, this is what I have to do. I have to right. hop into bed you yeah. know, the first date, second well, that's date. The that's what's expected the media of me. Shows you. And now at schools, um, the, the sex ed classes basically to expect young people to act that way. So if, right. you, if you don't have a higher standard for young people, it's just even parents 
say, well, the reality is this, so I'm going to have to at least have them be protected. And, and it's unfortunate that we're not expecting more for young people. We really need to apologize to young people that we're not uh, thinking more of them, calling them to something higher. Young people are, I think a lot of them are tired of seeing the culture the way it is, this hookup culture. They want something more. They need voices of people inviting them to mm -hmm. do something more. And I think uh, something really important that we have to remember is uh, I hear often from chastity speakers that um, the standards a woman sets forth, the men will go forward and meet them you know if there's a culture of ladies standing up there will be a culture of gentlemen that follows and right. i think that's something that women have to understand yeah. and hopefully live up to think about what happened um earlier this year with all the spring break issues that came oh, up i mean they are walking terrible. into just i mm -hmm. mean you talk about walking into harm's way uh, and not only exposing themselves god forbid to sex trafficking which is happening all over the world and which is a huge problem but walking into a, a situation where we had, uh, it was a horrible, horrible story about a gang rape mm -hmm. uh, when people were watching. And, and this is a kind of culture that, that anything goes. And right. we have to realize that the responsibility is not just on women, but it's on men as well. And, and they're both mm -hmm. called to these standards, mm -hmm. which is the best for them. Right. And, uh, yeah. and, you know, with the spring break thing, I always say to the parents, you know, it's your fault, too, because who lets their, their, who pays, their who high school for their college or education? college person right. go off on these vacations? They cost, they flying places in Mexico and the Caribbean, and they're spending money in hotels. Who's allowing this? Who's in, 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 in so parents, if you're being an enabler, mm -hmm. I mean, I never let my daughters go on spring break. We just didn't do that. My niece tried that once. She's now married with, with <laughs> children of her own. But when she was in college, she said to my sister, well, I'm going to go on spring break down to Florida. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. My sister said, well, fine, if you go, um, just remember when you come back, I'm no longer going to pay for your tuition and we're not paying for your car insurance. So bingo. Okay, right. right we, have to, we have to break. But when we come back, Janet, we're going to be hearing from Pam Stenzel, who is an amazing mm -hmm. chastity speaker. That's and right. you talk about somebody who tells it like it is. Yes, she does. <laughs> She does not mince words. No. So this is going to be interesting. She's going to give us an idea of just how bad it is out there, what it's like, and the fallout mm -hmm. from this kind of uh, dangerous lifestyle that, again, says anything goes. And the beauty of chastity and why father knows best, mother knows best, and Holy Mother Church, of course, knows best. We'll be right back on Catholic View for Women. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the Catholic View for Women. Teresa Tamio here, along with, of course, Astra Bene Gutierrez and my co-host, also Janet Morena. And this is an interesting topic. We're talking about let's hear it for the guys. Let's support the guys out there. We just heard a few minutes ago from Jeffrey Strickland, who, Joffrey Strickland, who lives and works in Rome and is all about upholding the teachings of the church and encouraging other women right. uh, whom he dates and, and comes in contact with to do the same. And now we're going to hear a very interesting interview with Pam Stenzel, who's probably, wouldn't you say, Astrid, one of the top speakers Absolutely. on chastity well, yes, and the yes, issue worldwide. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. and she is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. She is a convert to Catholicism, and she's also very active in the pro-life movement. But Janet, you sat down with her yes. not too long ago. Tell us what, what we're going to hear about in the clip. Well, basically, you know, Stan, Pam was in the East Coast, actually not far from my home in Metuchen, New Jersey. She was speaking for the arch, uh, for the diocese, and I took advantage. I said, come on over to my house, and we're going to interview. And uh, I was telling her about this whole, you know, I said, come on, Pam, I've heard you talk about your chassis talks. And the focus is always talking about the girls, but let's hear some guy stories. So uh, in this clip, we'll hear what she says uh, about the guys, some advice. And it's, I think it's important to hear it from her because she sees so much out there right. in the culture because she's talking and she, about and this. She and she raised sons. She, she has sons. sons. Right. She raised sons. All right, so let's hear what Pam Stenzel has to say. She is uh, a world-renowned chastity speaker, and here's her perspective on the guys. Our culture is just screamed at our young girls that what makes them valuable is their body. So 40 years past feminism, it's not their mind, their character, who they are as, as young women, it's whether or not they're sexually attractive to men. And this is what's thrown at them in the culture. And so what do girls think? They think I need to dress a certain way, I need to show certain body parts in order to get the attention that I need. And then you know, the selfies and the Facebook and the, the over attention on ourselves is is not been helping our girls at all. And, and, and what girls need to understand is that men are very visual sexually, and so of course, if you're going to dress in that manner, you're going to get that kind of attention. 
Um, but is that the is that really what you want? Do you want to be acknowledged for who you are, or do you want to be a conglomeration of body parts? And and the way you put yourself forward, you know, if you demand respect, you get it. If you if you demand that guys oogle you, that's probably what's going to happen. So many uh, girls would say to me, "Well, why do I always get such losers?" Hmm. Uh, maybe you're baiting the loser with how you're trying to be attracted to men. And so uh, I, I tell girls all the time, opposites might attract when it comes to personality, not when it comes to character. You're going to get exactly what you are. So if you would spend more time worrying about who you are on the inside, your character qualities, being more like Christ, being uh, having gentleness and, and, and love and all the fruits of the Spirit, if you worry more about who you are on the inside, uh, you're going to get that kind of guy and, and a man of God. You want a man of God, you have to be a woman of God, not act like one. And uh, if, if you don't care, you know, you'll bait the hook with, with your body and, and what you get is shallow men looking for a good time. I think students today are finally kind of getting it that this sex with no meaning, this hookup culture is, is, is really empty. And they're starting to go, you know, the, the, the physical risk, the emotional risk isn't worth it. And, and there's this, a group of students that are starting to kind of reject this whole message of, of, of casual sex, if we would call it that. And I was speaking at a Catholic high school and a senior boy, six foot eight in my world, that's a giant, tall boy was chasing me down the hall. His teachers told me he was a 4.0 student, full ride scholarship to play basketball at Duke University. Chased me down the hall with his arms in the air yelling, virgin, you don't miss a six foot eight senior yelling virgin at you down the hallway. And he cut up with me and he said, Pam, it's easy for girls. It's easy for girls to tell people they're virgins, but you don't know what it's like for a boy. You don't hear the locker room talk. You don't hear the boys on my basketball team mocking me, talking about what girls are easy. What do I say to all my friends when they're mocking me because I'm a senior and I'm still a virgin? I looked at that young man and I said, you know what? The next time your friends start to tease you because you're saving yourself for your wife, I want you to look at your friends and I want you to say this. Any day, tonight, I could choose to be like you, but you will never again be like me. Once it's gone, it's gone. It takes that long to throw it away. It takes a lot of integrity and self-respect to wait. And, and I think there's a group of students who are beginning to believe that they're worth it and that their marriage is worth it. And that even as difficult as it might be, it's worth doing the right thing. And I tell students all the time, Philippians 4.13 says this, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. We have everything we need to live lives of holiness. It's found in our faith, in Jesus, his blessed mother, the sacrament. We have everything we need to live lives of holiness and we need to just grasp onto our faith and do that. It would be nice if she would tell us how she really feels. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Awesome. I know. Awesome. And what a statement well, about that young you know, man. She told me a beautiful story about her, her son uh, when they got married. Uh, of course, he dated a girl also who was chaste, and, and of course, her son. And she said they both had purity rings and that they uh, gave up on the altar and then exchanged their vows and got their wedding rings back. So they, they you know, placed their purity rings on the altar and then got their wedding rings. And it's so beautiful. She got me all teary when she oh, was telling yeah. me the story. Of course, of it's, you know, so she really instilled this in, in her three sons. And uh, she said, it wasn't easy, Janet. It wasn't easy. And you could see by what she said. It's yes. tough, tough love, you know. The parents' role is so crucial. And something she doesn't mention about this young man, the six foot eight young man, is that he um, actually told her that the reason why he was uh, had made a commitment to chastity is he'd seen a Pam Stenzel DVD in his confirmation class ah. that he never forgot. So, so you know, we have See? to make this topic a priority. And so parents who can't find a class for their kids to go to, buy a DVD from Pam Stenzel's website and just play it for your kids. Discuss this information. Just be proactive and don't be passive about this and, and talk about it often. I, I actually saw Pam not too long ago. She did a workshop for parents right. and she stressed how important it is for parents to be involved in their kids' formation. And she gave some really good practical tips for parents. The first one, that she mentioned was, first of all, do not abdicate your role. You have to be a part of this. That's You're right. going to be accountable to God one day about your formation for your kids. It's their souls we're talking about here. The first thing she said was um, delaying gratification. Does your child know how to delay gratification? Or do they always want to feel good in the moment and not, they can't wait for something? Like, for example, saving their money to be able to buy something later. Do they, do they have that discipline? And then uh, number two, personal responsibility. Instead of 
playing the blame game, sort of like Adam mm -hmm. and Eve, you know, the blame game. She says, own up to your weaknesses and your failures and go to confession. You know, have that humility. Um, number three, teach empathy. How important is it for guys especially to understand the position they're putting the girls in when they get involved sexually? The girls have um, physically, emotionally more to lose uh, than the young men. So having that empathy is so important. Um, and then bringing up chastity often. The culture provides so many opportunities. That's all right. these films coming out, mm -hmm. all these things coming up. Instead of being at war with the culture, she says use the culture. Opportunities to teach your kids about why that is um, not acceptable, why that does not, um, you know, is not, why does it not teach dignity of the person. And then something else she mentioned which is really beautiful is to provide a ritual wherein the, ch the children make a commitment to chastity. And she said that um, there's a, a family where the parents took the, the young man or, or the young woman to dinner and they actually um, asked for four places. And they had dinner and they presented the young person with the ring and they actually had a fourth place for the future spouse. Wow. Uh -huh. And they nice. ordered dinner for yeah. the person. I said, there's that, that person, if you're called to marriage, is alive. So let's just think about that person and, and their soul, and you're making a commitment to a real person. So I thought that was really useful. She's right. spoken to so many parents and just all over the world. So I thought these tips were very useful. I hope it helps people viewing the show and today. And the other thing, too, is I think you have to set limits. You know, you start with when your mm -hmm. children are young, and, you know, they start now with this term, play dates, you know. Kid, mm -hmm. Little kids go on play dates, you know. Right. We didn't do that. My, I got together with my, my girlfriends and play our date. kids played. Mm -hmm. But we never called it a play date. But you see now that language starts very young. And then you hear parents now allowing young teenagers, 13, 14 years old, to go out on a date. Who, who would allow that? I wouldn't. You know, so I think how the, we get into trouble and, and the community chat section mm -hmm. you just said is important. But I think you have to set rules and boundaries. And then when they're a little bit older and they come over with a girlfriend or boyfriend, well, do you allow them to go into the bedroom alone to watch TV? I've heard of cases where some parents allow this. Are you kidding me? They have to be in the open, in the family room, you know, uh, enjoying the TV there Absolutely. with other people or uh, invite them to a meal or whatever. But this going off alone or go down to the, the den or whatever right. is inappropriate because mm -hmm. you're allowing, you're, let's you're be, feeding let's into that culture. You're letting the devil creep in. Right. You know, mm -hmm. he's just there on their shoulder, you know, the good angel, bad and, angel. And, and yes. young people, we know, and we, we've got to wrap up because we've got the homework, but you, you listen to Dr. A or any of our other experts that we have on EW10, and they will tell you from a psychological perspective, kids don't have that understanding of, what, uh, of, of what's going to harm them. Right. And t your brain isn't fully developed mm -hmm. until that part of the brain until, let's say, you're 20, 21 mm -hmm. years old, or mm -hmm. actually 25, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. And so what are we doing? Right. with this and putting kids in harm's and, and way. With, and with young men, we have to remember chastity, formation for young men, we have to think about pornography, mm -hmm. their visual. So we did talk about, um, in, in a previous episode, about Delivered, the book yeah, by Matt Fred. Which is great. Please yeah. get it. A lot of young people are right now addicted to pornography. We have to help them. So parents, please educate yourself on this topic, especially for young men. That's right. And we and have some, we want to get quote, to the homework. I but before homework, time. Teresa, I just we... want to read a quote from Mother Teresa. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a nice quote. It's called, a clean heart is a free heart. A free heart can love Christ with an undivided love in chastity, convinced that nothing and nobody will separate it from his love. Purity, chastity, and virginity created a special beauty in Mary that attracted God's attention. That's I can't believe Teresa. how fast this, this episode uh, went, so I'm going to turn it back over to you. And the other quotes that we were supposed to get to, we didn't have time we'll for. We'll put those on the website. We'll put those on the website, but Absolutely. we do have the Catholic view from a .com. And we're going to let Janet give us our homework assignment. Well, of course, the homework will be on the website, thecatholicviewforwomen.com. The first is uh, our friends at the Abstinence Clearinghouse have many great resources. You can go to abstinence.net uh, for those. And, of course, at the Catholic View for Women, we're going to have our discussion questions we have under each episode. You just click on this episode in addition to reminding you about the homework. And, of course, so we want you to sign up. Uh, we have a, a monthly e-letter that we send mm -hmm. out each month. Uh, get us your email, and we'll let you know what's going on, what we're doing, and other important things about our programming. And again, it's the thecatholicviewforwomen.com. And we also have, you said, the discussion questions. It's a great way to keep up the conversation, and maybe even to challenge yourself. And what areas have 
have we all bought into the culture because we're all impacted by it. I mean, we just can't help it because it's everywhere. It's at the gas station. It's in the elevator. It's it's everywhere. These messages, the billboards at the airport, you know, wherever you go, you're hearing a particular message from the culture, which is completely opposite of what the beautiful church teaches. So, wow, great discussion. And That's right. uh, it, it's really, really good to um, hear it for the guys. So thanks for watching us. And of course, this is the Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with Astra Bene Gutierrez and Janet Miranda. And please, we have so many resources on our website at the thecatholicviewforwomen.com. Really want to encourage you to follow up and to make sure you do utilize those. And if you have a question, email us, That's right? right? Give us a, neat, a, a shout out, an email, a Facebook, friend us on Facebook. And again, this is the Catholic View for Women. Glad you joined us. And don't forget, let's hear it for the gals, but also for the guys. CatholicViewForWomen.com. And we'll see you next time right here on EWTN. Thanks for joining us.